Hey guys, welcome to the weekly show. I'm your host Khalid Mohidin and this is the show where we catch you up with everything that happened in the last week and we take a peek into the future. Before we get going, just get that subscribe button, press that notification bell, like, share and subscribe. So let's get into this week's content. So guys, it's been a while since I've spoken to Alistair. We've had two test matches. It's been quite crazy. I think that I want to just give a quick summary of the Newlands test first because it was probably one of the best test matches that we've seen in a long time. It went to the full five days, no rain interruptions and a good pitch to, to bat and bowl on. So it was quite a good contest. I mean, I think this will go down as one of the top 10 tests um, ever that have been here at Newlands. So, I know I'm talking from a very, a very shallow space here because I haven't really experienced a lot of test cricket in my time that I've been on this earth. But um, what was your take on the second test, Alison? Well, credit goes to the guys that made such a great pitch. I mean, we've seen a few shockers over the years and it's obviously a new staff. Um, it was great to see it going to five days because, you know, there's talk now, obviously, four-day test cricket and yeah. all of that. And that proved, that last day proved that there's still plenty of five-day tests on its way. Um, I've obviously been going to Newlands and watching the newest test since 93, when India were here in the 92-93 series. And it was, for me, um, I mean, obviously, I wasn't happy with the result, but we took it all the way. Um, maybe in the first innings, we could have got 400 yeah. and we could have salvaged a draw. But I think that after the two tests, we are kind of a little bit ahead because even though England won by almost 200 runs, uh, our defeat at Centurion, and we, I mean, it was a quite a big defeat over England. And, I mean, England were, what, five, six, seven overs away from a draw. So yeah. it was tight, but that's what we want. We want test cricket like that. That's why we love test cricket. So obviously the main topic of this video, because of the weekly magazine that we, we put out every week, is the aftermath of the test series. So now we're looking into the next test and PE. And this is a must-win game for South Africa if they want to get a positive result out of this test series. Um, we need to win it if we want a chance to win the series. So, like, <sighs> quite a difficult one because a lot of people were talking about what the lineup should be. And there's a lot of talk about what the lineup should be, who should be dropped, if, if anybody should be dropped. My personal decision is that I think we should go with an unchanged 11. I think that consistency is key to building a test side that is a champion side again. I think that the players that have been given a chance need an extended run in the side at least till the end of the series so that they can gain momentum into the next series wherever we play against. Um, I know that you wrote a column this morning. Um, the elephant in the room. <laughs> the elephant in the room where you decided and you believe and you've been talking about it for some time now. People mustn't think that you just did this piece just because you want to get a media reaction. You've been backing Bavuma for quite some time. So just give me your thought process into why you think Pavuma should get a start in the well, my first, My first point is is you can't buy experience. He's played 39 tests. He's played the likes of Australia away and at home. He's, uh, he's been part of a team that's won those series. Um, against England, he scored 100 right here. It was one of my fav favorite hundreds. His first one, he should have got 100 against Australia in the fourth test at the Wanderers. He was left stranded on 99, but it's the 39 tests. That for me is a big factor because it's experience. Um, obviously, it's a tough one because I don't want to say who should get dropped or because, look, no one scored 100 yet. So it's not like three guys have put their hands up and say, I'm in the team. So I still think it's it's fair game, actually. And the fact that Bavuma was made vice captain for the tour to India meant that he was part of the setup and he's in the squad. So, yes, he may have gets told to, right, go play for the Lions and, and get, get a few hundreds. But... At the end of the day, he's on his CV, he's got 39 tests. And often, you know, he's been made the scapegoat, but there's been others in that team over the past 18 months after the Australia series that haven't performed. And shouldn't he be allowed an opportunity at least? And in PE, there's a um, stronghold of, of the game where they want to see their own players. We need a team that needs a bit of representation, especially for, for that test. And, yeah, if it fails or... Um, he's not able to score runs then you know we can always revert back to what we have now but what happens if he scores runs then he goes to the Wanderers on his home ground and he starts to go forward, forward in his career but it's a tough one because the top order is set but we haven't seen any hundreds yet so with the new regime 
I don't really want to speak about what happened before the new coaches came in. Mm. So my thing is the way forward is that if you're not scoring runs, you go back to domestic level and you go earn your stripes. We've seen that Boucher actually backs a guy like Tienes de Brain, but he's dropped Tienes de Brain and told him, go get runs. Mm -hmm. Today's game against the Cobras, we're looking over here. I don't know when you guys are going to actually watch this video, but right now we're at on day one of the four-day franchise series. Cobras are taking on the Titans at Newlands and the Brain has just scored an eight. So he looked a bit, he didn't look very comfortable on the speech. It was a spicy wicket, but he didn't really look comfortable. Imagine what you would do against the guy, likes of Broad and Archer. Um, so I think that the, the method of Boucher rewarding young talent coming through the system, like Zubay Ramza, who I think fully deserves a chance to prove himself in this test side. I think that we can't really judge Zubair on two series, on two, two particular, on, on two matches. We can't really, because I mean, when he was in India, he did really well for that 60. He batted really well. He showed a lot of maturity. And I think we, I've always been a, a, in favour of giving youngsters an opportunity over a long extended time mm. and trying to get the best out of him. I think the only way they learn the best is in the middle and he's going to be learning a hell of a lot playing against the best bowlers in the probably two of the best bowlers in the world a bowling unit that is quite quite it's actually very good and the likes of Jimmy Anderson I know Jimmy's not going to be playing in the rest of the series and that might be a good thing for Hamza to be able to stake his claim and to be able to have a guy like Peter Milan above him that has played with franchise cricket with him for quite some time to, to, to see him perform gives him confidence so I think it's too quick for us to chop and change this is not an ODI for me it's a test match it's mm. test series test is a longer format it takes longer for you to actually expand and prove yourself in the game I think that it's about time that we rebuild because it's a transition phase and I'd rather let them give youngsters an opportunity to settle themselves in so by the next test championship comes around, they are full of confidence. Mm. Zubair is learning in the toughest conditions against the best bowlers in the world. He's learning the game of test cricket in the middle out there. And I think that it's, he deserves a chance to maybe push it forward. If it's not Zubair that gets dropped for Timba, who else would you drop then for him? Well, you? I've just, you know, the merits of Zubair being there is fantastic. Um, my main concern is a number three batsman in high stakes test match now against England in the next new test is now on his shoulders immense amount of pressure to perform against as you say some of the best bowlers he's only got what four tests under his belt um, and then you've got Bavuma with 39 tests under his belt has been part of Victoria's teams home and away um, is probably able to handle the pressure um, you know, let's not look at what happened in the first class game because you can't take too much into that. It's the, this is one of the hardest sports to play. Mm -hmm. You're an individual placed within a team dynamic. There's no place to hide. You know, in football and rugby, you can get by with a few games playing average, but here yeah, your averages, your stats, cold heart stats, speak so so much. But I don't want to say it, but if there was one person, I would look at. I would probably bring up Faf and Rasi up the order um, have Hamza fall out for this one test and bring Bavuma in at five you got to cock at six that would only be my solution it's my opinion yeah. so I'm entitled to that um, and it's a hard one because I am a big fan of Hamza I saw some great shots from him at Centurion um, he was in Mm. We discussed it. We said he was in, yeah. you know, and he just got taken out by very smart bowling. That's experience at the highest level. Uh, Broad was gunning for him at Centurion, and you could see, you could see in that first over that he faced. Well, not not the first over, but that one over, he was struggling, and then the next over he went out. It was kind of oh man, uh, he's got a long career ahead of him. But Vuma's 29. There's experience, and that's the main argument. And I've said throughout the whole of the beginning of the season that Bovuma should bat higher. Um, obviously, the opening partnerships haven't been great. So he, Hamza is also faced with a crisis. It could be 25 for one. Does he need that with at his age and given the amount of tests that he's played? So those are the, like the main arguments that I have there with Bovuma coming in and you bringing up Rassi and Faf. Faf should bat at three. Rassi... Four. There's not a there's not a major reshuffle of the top order. Um, no one's really put their hand up and scored a hundred. 
And that, that's been a big concern for me over the past year. But now in this new setup, we are seeing obviously more improvement. It's still early days. Um, but going to this test series, we're halfway. It's been enthralling. It's been amazing. You've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. Um, it's been pretty fair. Uh, I don't know what the deal with Root is right now. England having stomach bugs left, right and centre. It's no excuse because this is a professional sport. We're in the middle of a series. we still got a good chance to take that series. So I just want to jump in there with yeah. what Alistair said. He said something very important. He said that he's entitled to his own opinion. Now, there's going to be a lot of flack that's going to be shown to him about his column because of all the media attention that things about Timber has been said on, online. There's a tweet that went out from him, from his personal account about him that people really responded very harshly to and there was a lot of hard words that were said to him. But the point of Cricket Fanatics magazine is to actually get everybody to be able to have their own voice and to give their own opinions. It's a place for everybody to actually voice their opinions and have a space to say what they think and what they don't think. Everybody is entitled to their opinion and it's not necessarily the the what they are saying and their views are not necessarily the views of our organization, of Cricket Fanatics magazine. That's his opinion on his own. I obviously disagree with his, his opinion, but it doesn't mean that I'm right or he's wrong or he's right and I'm wrong. So I just want you guys to just bear that in mind when you read our opinion pieces. Our opinion pieces normally will have a banner across with a picture on and the name of the, of the writer on. So, for example, Alistair Fraser column. So then you know that it's an opinion piece and it's not necessarily the views of Cricket Fanatics magazine. But I just needed to, I, let's talk more about cricket. Yeah, I just had to say, get that out of the way. So my point of view is that an unchanged 11, I don't think that they did much wrong, this team. They're playing some good cricket. There's been an increase. I like that Boucher is using stats and averages to, to speak his side. He's awarding good performances in domestic cricket um, to, to get their side. Do you know that there was a talk about whether Pavuma is getting picked based on stats or based on the color of his skin? And that's a massive, massive talking point that a lot of people, and a very controversial talking point. We don't see race that piece. on this platform. That's, so that's, that's my thing, and that, that's your thing. We yeah. don't. It's not. It's not a. I don't see the color side of it. I'm looking at a guy that at the beginning of the season was picked as vice captain, mm. has got experience, and now he's left out in the cold, and there's no explanation why. So and there was a big ruckus before the newest test of his name not being on the team sheet. Yeah. Let's not forget that. Yeah. Um, and I'm not jumping on any one side or bandwagon because there are a lot of guys that deserve to be up there. There's the Edwards, all of that. There's, there's a, everyone's got a favourite. They, you know, it's, it's like a packet of quality streets. <laughs> yeah. I like the green triangle. Someone likes, you know, any other one. But you know what I'm trying to say. It's, it's that, that's how we see things, you yeah. know. And, and, and you've got your. Opinion. Everyone has their yeah. opinion about it. I think this is one of the first periods of me and Alistair having a heated discussion yeah. here and disagreeing with each other here. <laughs> but okay, yeah, so I think maybe one of the main reasons why they're leaving Temba out is that he's only averaged about 17 in the last 13 yeah, matches 18, or something. Yeah, 17, 18. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big so fact. I think that's maybe a big factor of why they, they let him let him down. I mean, Zubair has been excellent in, in domestic cricket and also he scored that big 60 in India. So and I think. Good. He was one of the shining lights yeah. of that. No, no, I agree, absolutely. Yeah. There's. So, we both have our different opinions on what the 11 should be, but that's enough about the Proteus match and what's happening in the Test Series. <laughs> no, 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 I want to say um, one more thing. Okay, let's talk about why the new ball wasn't used when Stokes came in. <laughs> now, there was lots of conjecture on Supersport. KP had a go wondering why they didn't take the new ball. Mark Boucher later on spoke that evening and said they, their strategy was that by hanging on to the old ball and bowling uh, Maharaj, they felt that Stokes would maybe hit one out. And I think that's a fair strategy. I think whatever you do in this game, you're going to get criticized whether one person likes it or not. I think it was a good strategy. There were some folks that said Vernon was sick and then it was actually Heinrich Nordkir that was sick. So there were, few, there were a few issues. But I think the Proteus setup has got quite a few things right and we should applaud them for that because mm -hmm. it's a pretty decent England team yeah. and we shouldn't just rock up thinking that we're going to win every game yeah. because there's a lot to be learned and there's so much these players are learning right now as we speak. It's a four match test series. We win in against in PE, it's a different ball game again. I don't think that we should be jumping on the bandwagon over here. 
I have a bit of an issue with fans that jump out and just have a crisis or the meltdown when we lose a match. I mean, you learn, you learn from lo losses. You learn a hell of a lot. Like Faf Tupresi said, and people are calling for Faf Tupresi's head and saying that he should be dropped. He's probably been one of the best captains South Africa's ever had. And he's, he's actually ranked as one of the top 10 batsmen, uh, 10 captains ever. It's crazy because Amla was, he stood down after two tests against England when they lost to it, yeah. You know, we don't want a crisis now in the middle of a yeah. series. That getting rid of your captain right now is worse wrong direction to go yeah. down towards because there's there's a set team dynamic and they weren't having a go at him when they won at Centurion. Yeah. And there, there was the old fuff that we've seen. It was a happy fuff that I saw when Paul Rocks won uh, the MSL. Continue with that. He's going to score runs. He scored 100 last season, mm. but continue with that. Yeah, because, I mean, you, you would have seen as well. Like I saw at the beginning when everything was going south for South, for the cricket of South Africa, the um, jobs were <laughs> were falling down the wayside and people were losing their jobs, like dropping like flies. I mean, everybody was calling for Mark Boucher's coach, Mark Boucher's coach, please. Go. And we want more pro we want more legends in the game. Mm. That was the big call on social media. Not everybody said wanted that, but a large portion of the community really wanted that we th we did a few polls on our on our channel putting up some options on on the on the table and a lot of, a lot of the percentage went to mark boucher's coach mark boucher's in yeah we've got jock callis as a batting coach we've got charles langefeld possibly the, the best bowling coach that south africa's ever all the best yorker ever yeah and those are those are factors that south africa lack so him coming in is a great option and we've got enoch who is one of the He's best there. coaches in the country yeah. with, trophy, with regards to trophies, yeah. plus Mark Boucher with regards to trophies. And we've got Asho Prince in SAA, yeah. probably the best coach that, that is good at nurturing young talent. Fantastic, yeah. Perfect place for him to, to, to really hone his skills and become, um, and to nurture that next generation of talent into the Proteus side. Ashwell's key. Ashwell's key because yeah. he's in that environment of where course. the next bunch are coming in. Yeah. His, his eyes are there. He's been in this game for a long, long time. Yeah. He knows it inside out and he's a vital component of this yeah. way that we're going now in the next years or well, the next two, three years. So you guys wanted or some of you guys wanted this to happen. We have it. We lose one game. Pyre. It was a really good game, good clashes. I mean, one of those, I know it's 189 runs and it looks bad, but if one of those 80s had to be turned into a century, it's a different ball game altogether. So it's small margins and small brain farts, as Dean Alga spoke about. Faf admitted to him playing a stupid shot at that particular time. But there's a lot of good signs. The way Rassi, Rassi van der Dissen anchored his innings at a time that we needed him. There's, there's a sign from Peter Malan that played an amazing what he said at the press conference about it being a privilege not it's not pressure it's a privilege i mean amazing amazing player that he is him scoring an 80 we've had dean alga performing well we have there's just some time and they're not young guys mm. they're in their 30s or late 20s you need, like batsmen only mature around that age anyway yeah. so you've not only is it test experience and all that, but it's it's age they've been out in the middle playing this level for 12 years yeah and they're still in it and they're actually going forward. So give the give the party some time. Let's see what happens in PE and we'll be here again yeah. um, talking about it and debating about what went right or what went wrong in the next test. Um, but that's all we have for you this week. We don't want to ramble on for too long and keep you guys for too long. But you know what to do. You guys have to subscribe, press that notification bell, like, comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to download our Cricket Fanatics Weekly where we do a written we basically give you a summary of everything that happened in the last week and a little bit of what's happening in the future, just like this video will do. So thanks, guys. Thanks for all the support. We're really growing on all social media. Continue supporting us. We need all the support that we can get from you guys. This is your platform. Don't forget that.